Hello world, I'm Brancliff, and in the past I made a video on the top few things I think all Elsword newbies should know. Let's have a bit of change of pace here. This video will be about a few things I think all Elsword players should know. Uh, a lot of this isn't actually directed to the gameplay itself, since I want this to be things all Elsword players should know. It's connected to like newbies and endgame players, and there's not many things you could apply to the game itself that affect both of those, although there are still some things. Like, I'm surprised at how many people didn't know that you're supposed to right click on a chat tab to make the system messages shut up. And I have I have no idea how you guys put up with hearing the system messages go off every time someone uses a potion. Whatever. Uh, no, this, this video isn't about that. This video is not so much about the gameplay, but no, no, there are a few things. And let, let's let's get to talking about those things because I've been stalling it for long enough. So. Top 5 things I think all Elsword players should know. Uh, number 1, general criticisms of the community. Now before I say anything about Elsword's overall community, I have to say one thing. Every game with a focus on PvP is naturally going to have some crappy people in it. That's just an inherent fact. It's something that just comes with playing online games as a whole. But really, if if your criticism of Elsword's overall community is, REE, PEOPLE ARE JUST SALTY, then, uh, shut up because that's not even that big of a problem. From my personal experience, angry whispers at the end of PvP really are not that common, but may maybe that's because I don't play Rose. But the funny thing about that is, it really doesn't matter if they're common or not, because angry whispers are just angry whispers. Sure, you might have someone stupid slide into your chat box, but after that, so what? It's a little annoying in the moment, and once it's over, it just doesn't affect you again. You'll probably never see it again or think about it again. It's like seeing stupid comments on YouTube. They're stupid, and they're like a mild nuisance, but you know, after a while, you just forget about it and move on with your life. Back to the overall community thing, though. I think everyone who gets invested in this game has an idea for how they would change the community, but no one is willing to change themselves to suit what other people might find to be a better community. Everyone has ideas, but no one has commitment. I mean, really think about this for a second. You've probably heard someone say something that's like how they change the game's community, but when they finish talking about it, have you ever thought to yourself, like, oh man, that person was telling the truth. I'm going to try to personally adjust myself to not be like that. No, you've probably never thought that. Now, if you're wondering what I'd change about the community, I'd want to reduce the levels of general malicious intent, less like defaming and exposed kind of things. That kind of thing doesn't get this community anywhere, and I don't see why people really do it anyways. I mean, like, let's say you think someone, some big name in this game is like bad at Elsword. So you make a blog post or a video or whatever about how you think they're bad at the game and exposing them. And and it's like, well, okay, now what? Did that really accomplish anything? Did did you like achieve anything? Did did we get any positive changes out of you doing that? Probably not. You probably just defaced someone and got nothing out of it. And even if they were bad at the game, man, why does that matter? What do you really gain by calling someone bad at the game? Nothing, so don't do it. However, I will provide one very important exception. If you want to call someone out for being a hacker and you've got proof, go ahead. They should probably be given the hammer for that. Okay, number two, MMORPGs are run by companies. Now this might seem like a really dumb moment, so why am I mentioning this, let alone having it really this early on the list? Well, I see a lot of complaints about this game's monetization methods that I think are highly unwarranted. And it's weird because like, a, a lot of people who play this game are like anime garbage, so they're the kinds of people who play like Japanese gacha games. And it's like, you mean you're not going to complain about having to summon the newest swimsuit asuna in SAO every time to stay relevant? But if you want to spend a little bit of money on getting your weapon upgraded like once every like year, that's a problem? I, I don't understand, people are weird. People seem to forget that MMORPGs are run by companies, and the point of companies is to make money. Now that doesn't excuse every monetization scheme out there, I'm not gonna tell you that like Star Wars Battlefront 2 did nothing wrong or anything, and I definitely don't need to tell you that because if it has the EA logo go attached to it, then you can already tell it's horrible. Yeah, I will say, you know, I think one thing that gacha games have over Elsword is a lot of them have a system in place where if you spend enough money, they'll eventually give you the pity points. Like in Brave Frontier, and when I'm praising Brave Frontier over the game you're playing, that's when you know there's a problem. In Brave Frontier, they'd say, if you spend enough gems to get 20 summons, we'll eventually give you dear bitch. 
And, uh, you know, I probably should have saved up for those 20 free summons. But yeah, they have a system in place where eventually they'll pity you enough to give you what you paid for. And Elsor really should do that. Like, if you burn 200 ice burners, we'll give you one weapon or accessory. And, you know, I think that'd be fair. I don't think that would hinder their profits at all. I, I want them to have a pity thing. But it's also important to know that cosmetics alone is not enough to fund an MMORPG, except if it's Maple Story 2. But, um, if cosmetics alone was enough to fund an MMORPG, there'd be an MMORPG out there that actually does it, but no, there isn't. I see both cases. Uh, sometimes Elsword's monetization methods are unfair, and, uh, I, I do sometimes think that they need to, you know, chill the fuck out. But hey, they've got that ED shop, like, that's, that's walking in the right direction. But the point of MMORPGs, such as Elsword, is to make money. And Elsword's monetization plans really are not so bad. I mean, there's worse. I mean, like, yeah, there are loot crocs, uh, loot crocs, wow, I wanted to say loot created blind box and I just said loot crocs oh my goodness uh it's the new tomb raider game with laura crunt never mind okay yes there are loot crates slash blind box shenanigans in the form of ice burners that do influence your stats but when it comes down to it anyone at the end game who can properly apply themselves and you know it might suck doing so but they can pull it off they can't eventually get their 5-5 they just gotta like grind a bit and you know play the economy but they will eventually get that if they work hard enough and after that maybe the weapon the weapons are the, their prices fluctuate a bit i mean i remember when they were like 700 mil usually but they're, they're getting to the point where it's like even cheap ones are like 900 to 1 billion so i don't know you can't get there it's just gonna take a while as for the ice burner accessories well yeah i think that's when you get to the price range when it becomes unfeasible to work for it but that's not so bad because the new accessories that we're getting these days like in the new dungeon content and stuff i feel like it's getting to the point where it's better to use those than actual ice burner accessories so i don't think it's so bad but you know the point is the things you want you can work hard to get them i i know there's a lot of people in my comment section who think that working hard does not get you places uh they're, they're just lazy pieces of crap they need to you know work for things I mean, like they're probably the people that voted for bernie sanders okay that's going too far you can tell when i go off script for these kinds of things now sometimes i hear some complaints from players that at first i think were really valid but nowadays i'm not so sure considering that yes the point of these games is to make money sometimes i see players complain that the company doesn't cater enough to free to play players and well considering that the point of these games is to make money i i don't feel like that's such a bad thing i i mean like, in the eyes of the company, you're really not helping the game at all, which is why they don't usually have you in mind as much. And, you know, like, look, if, if you're the kind of person who plays Elsword regularly, and you've played the game long enough to the point where you got to the end game, like, you know, you're, 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 you're at the cap, you're working on the third job advancement, it, it kind of bites, because the quest sucks, but, you know, you've gotten that far up. I think if you played the game long enough to that point, I feel like you've gotten enough out of the game to justify giving them a little bit of money. I mean, is it really worse than, like, you know, you you got a game console, right? And some huge triple A uh, RPG comes out, and like you 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 pay sixty dollars for it, and you know it's a blast. And then you finish the game, and then you never touch it again. Like, it, was that really a better use of your money? Because you know, once the game's over, the game's over. But when you're playing an MMORPG, the game isn't over. Like the the upgrades that you get in the game end up lasting you a lot longer because you play the game for a lot longer. Anyways, okay, all right. Number three, the stranger side of your user agreement. Elsor has has a weird terms of service compared to other MMORPGs, and this is a two-way street. Sure, they might hit you for something harmless, but this is also the only game I know where you can actually get someone banned by proving, without a shadow of a doubt, that they did, in fact, scam you and jack your money. I don't know any other MMORPG that does that. Now, look, I know that reading the legalese sounds pretty boring, and that's because it is, but any precautions to ensure that your account stays safe is important. The last thing you want happening is that you get hit for uh, something you had no idea you could get hit for. I'd actually love to tell you more about the terms of service and some examples of things that they can hit you for that you really should not be hit for, but not only does it vary from region to region, but I'm actually not allowed to because one of the terms of service in Elsword WH is uh, not to make copies of the terms of service agreement, and I don't want this video to be considered that. So I'm gonna put a link to the Terms of Service Agreement for Elsword WH in the video description, but it's gonna be on you to read it yourself unless somebody is nice and puts the TLDR in the comment section for this video. Uh, I'm not gonna do it, but if any of you guys want to, be a bro, save an account, things like that.
Number four, learn the basics of economics. The game economy is different from server to server. I think everyone knows that much. But let's say you like one server over another because you think it has a better economy than the other server. But is that really valid if you know anything about how economics work? I mean, like, okay, let's say you're looking into buying some mithril whatevers, right? And the mithril whatevers are two mil each on Elsword WH and like 400k on Europe or something. Does that really mean that EU has the better economy just because the number is less? Uh, not necessarily. Because the things might sell cheaper, that's a two-way street, and that means when you want to sell something, you won't get as much out of it either. Also, because EU's player base is a joke, there's less supply. I mean, because EU's player base is a joke, there's also less demand, but like, if you want to buy out the board of items, then there's gonna be less stuff for you to buy out, so, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into economics, that's what I'm trying to say. And uh, even though learning about how money is exchanged probably is not the most interesting thing you could be doing with your time, uh, I think the knowledge could help you. And number five, this is the one that really has to apply to the game, and you know, it's kind of unfortunate. I wish that I put this in my video for newbies, but no, I think this is something everybody should know, even though newbies need to know it sooner. Number five, don't pick a main based on whether they're good or bad. So, like, pretty often, I'll recruit a newbie, and they'll be like, which raven is the best? And that's not even a good question, because if you're gonna do that, you should at least specify, like, best at what. They specialize in different things. I mean, like, what if you want to know which one is the best at Arena? That's probably not the question that you're asking, but that's not the point. Like, in my opinion, opinion, you should find a character that you like so much that you'd still play them even if they were reduced to garbage tier. Now, why is it that you shouldn't base your main on power? See, there's really two strong arguments against it. For one, it doesn't matter how strong a class is because if they're too boring for you to actually get around to playing them, you're not doing any damage with them anyway, even if they are really good. If the class you're playing is a Snorefest, you're not gonna actually want to play as them, and if you don't play as them, you're not doing any damage regardless. And two, power struggles in Elsword are very rickety bridges because rebalances come out all the time. Like, there's like, at, at the point I'm recording this, it's like, we get a rebalance like every month and things are always subject to change. You have to be prepared for anything, which is why I suggest mating a class you'd still play even if they were garbage. Find something fun that you like playing so that the satisfaction of playing them comes solely from playing them and not the results you get in doing so, because those results can be flushed away with just one rebalance patch. <clears throat> Metamorphy. And those are the five things that I believe every Elsword player should know. How do you feel about these five things? Uh, to recap, uh, general criticisms of the community, try actually like thinking about it and maybe applying yourself so that you fit someone else's idea for a better community, because everybody has ideas but no one has commitment. Uh, MMORPGs are run by companies, so you know, I understand if you live in another country and you have bad exchange rates. Don't be Mr. Krabs, it's okay to give them your money sometimes. Learn the basic knowledge of economics, I know it's boring, but it can really help you in the long run. Uh, uh, read your terms of service agreement because you don't want to get hit for something you had no idea you can get hit for. Uh, there are some strange things you can get hit for there that really shouldn't be there, but there's nothing we can do about it, so you may as well learn what they are to avoid them. And uh, don't pick a main based on whether they're good or bad, because whether they're good or bad changes all the time, and you gotta be prepared for the worst. What do you think every Elsword player should know? Share your sagely advice in the comment section, because I'm sure there's a lot of things that I missed. I'm Brancliffe. Goodbye, everyone.